You know, when Mary came in before Jesus to bring her oil, she was bringing her oil to pour it out on his feet. She got down and she poured it out and then she got her hair and she started using her hair and wiping his feet with her hair. And all the people in the room looked at her like she was crazy because it was messy. It was messy. And I feel like in this moment right now, it's an invitation. It's an opportunity to bring him our oil to bring him our oil and for some our oil looks like it's been a good week it's been a good weekend it's been a good month it's been a good summer and you got testimonies to bring and you got praise to bring but for some I feel like you're in your season right now and this week today you're here and maybe it's messy it's messy maybe what you have to bring is heaviness or maybe what you have to bring is heartache maybe what you have to bring is uncertainty maybe what you have to bring is something that somebody would look at you and say that's crazy you can't bring that but I just feel like the Lord is saying bring me your oil I love when you bring me your oil I love when you come with your oil, with that real tangible oil, that real substance from your heart, that, that, that thing that's real to you, that thing that's valuable to you. I love when you bring me your oil. And I see the Lord looking with, with eyes, with those laughing eyes, with that big smile he has, saying, I love when you bring me your oil. I love when you bring me your oil. So here we are, Jesus, bringing you what we have to bring, bringing you the oil of our heart. Lord, we love to bring you our oil. We love to bring what we have. We love to bring that which is valuable. We love, Jesus, to bring you our oil. We love to bring you, Jesus, to come and to look at you and to gaze on your eyes, saying, my life's purpose is simple. It's to love on you. It's to bring you oil. It's to bring you our hearts, our desire is simple. It's you, Jesus, to know you. Yeah. Yeah. So here's our oil, Jesus. Here's our oil, Lord. We're bringing it before you. We're bringing it to you. Saying you're the one, Jesus. You're the one that's worthy. You're the one, Jesus. You're the one we would lay our reputation and our pride down for. You're the one, Jesus. You're the one I'll get messy before. You're the one that there's no shame to come before you and say, here's what I have to bring. You're worthy. You're worthy of what I have to bring. You're worthy, Jesus. It's simple, Jesus. It's devotion. It's love. It's passion. It's desire.
every last drop, every last drop. We'll pour out every last drop, every last drop, every last drop. to ten virgins who took their lamps and they went out to meet the bridegroom 
But now five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. For those who were foolish took their lamps, but they did not take their oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And my question is, is where did the foolish waste their oil? Where was it that the foolish left their oil? Where was it that the foolish spent their oil? Like, why did they not have their oil with them? Where was it that they left it? Where was it that they spent it? Where was it that they poured it out? On what other lover did they waste their oil? Ooh, but Jesus, Lord, Lord, here we are with our oil telling you, Jesus, we love to bring you our oil. Lord, we love to bring you our oil. We don't want to waste our oil on another lover, on another place. Lord, we don't want to leave our oil somewhere else, but we love to bring you our oil. We love to do it. Lord, we love to save our oil and bottle it up and bring it to you. to bring you our oil, Jesus. We don't want to be like other lovers, Lord, who waste their oil in other places and spend their oil in other places, Lord, so that when you come and when you call that we find ourselves with no oil to bring, with no oil to light the fire that lights the way to you. Ooh, Jesus. So here we are with our oil. Look at all this oil, all this oil in this room for you, Lord. Oh, and I won't waste my oil on my calling. I won't waste my oil on.
anticipating to open the bottle and let the fragrance fill the room. Let the fragrance fill the room, Lord. Let the fragrance fill the room. Oh, you're worthy. Let the fragrance fill the room, Lord. Let the fragrance
verse 6 in chapter 25 of Matthew, it says, But at midnight there was a shout, Behold, the bridegroom come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to their prudent, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the prudent answered, No, there will not be enough for us. And you too, go instead to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they were going to make the purchase, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut. Later the other virgins also came, saying, Lord, Lord, open up for us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Be on alert then, for you do not know the day nor the hour, Lord. Father, I know that you're here right now. And we will not let this moment pass us by. We choose right now, Lord, to gather the oil that comes from the hard places, from the pressing. The oil that's coming from the pressure of life, Lord. The oil that's coming from the questions and the doubt. The oil that's coming from the misunderstandings, Lord. There's an oil that comes from that place. It's in the crushing, in the crushing that an oil comes. And Father, we will not let that oil grow stagnant and dry. We will gather it up. We choose to gather up that oil right now. And I thank you, Lord, that the very things that have been heavy on us have produced an oil in us that we can pour at your feet, Lord. And we choose right now to just pour that at your feet. I just want to invite you in whatever way possible that is for you. It's okay if you're not really feeling what's happening in the room because we're responding to him. We're responding to him. And so I just want to invite you to respond to him whatever way that looks like. If it looks like get on your knees, get on your knees. If it looks like standing up, stand up. If it looks like whatever, laying down, whatever it is, but just respond to him. The five prudent virgins responded to him rightly they brought their oil and they went in with him so father we want to know how to respond to you rightly we want to know how to respond to you when you come in the room we don't want a formula we don't want what happened last week we don't want what happened last month we want you we want the man holy spirit thank you that you're teaching us how to respond to you how to respond to the bridegroom. And there's always oil in the response, Lord. There's always oil involved when we respond to you. There's always gonna be a cost in responding to you, but it's so worth it, Lord. The cost is so worth it, Father. The cost is so worth it, Lord. Oh, the oil is so worth it, Jesus.
Yeah, I feel like for some in the room, maybe you do have that pressing, you have that trial, you have that circumstance. There's something that's that's caused a heaviness over you that you feel heavy or you feel like, man, I just, the state of the state for me right now is just, is just tough. I'm in a tough season. I'm in a tough place. And you feel like you're in that pressing. Specifically, you have felt heavy. You felt a heaviness. You felt the fog and a, just a heaviness. And I feel like, I feel like though your circumstance or your trial or whatever you're walking through may not have come from the Lord, I see this picture of the Lord leaning over to you and he's getting his lips really close to to your ears and I hear him saying, I'm bringing oil out of you. I'm bringing oil out of you. I'm bringing oil out of you. So I feel like for some, there's this invitation to lean into the pressing to lean into the trial, to lean, to actually lean into the heaviness because as you lean into the pressing, you're going to see new oil coming forth from you, a new oil to bring to the Lord, a new praise to bring to the Lord, a new shout to bring to the Lord. It's a new invitation to know him deeper and to know him closer, to know him more intimate. And I see the Lord saying that over you, I'm bringing oil. I'm bringing oil out of you. So Jesus, we lean in. We lean in, Jesus, to right where we're at. To the middle of our seasons, to the middle of our trials, to the middle of our circumstances. Because you know we love to bring you our oil. And if the hard places in our life can produce more oil for us to bring, then let us lean in. Then let us press in. Then let us not lose our gaze and our focus on you, knowing that what I'm walking through ultimately is unto bringing you our oil. It's unto bringing you our hearts. It's unto bringing you something real, something tangible to know you deeper. To know you more intimately, Jesus. So, Lord, we lean into the pressing. We lean in with our eyes on you, with our hearts postured towards you. Jesus saying that our circumstance, our trial, our season, it's not going to steal our oil. It's not going to steal our love. It's not going to steal our gaze. It's not going to steal our focus. In fact, it's going to invite us into more, into deeper. actually sees as a as a perfect place to drill for oil you feel dry but the Lord sees a perfect place to drill for oil so come and drill Lord come and drill for oil come and bring out that oil come and bring out that costly oil it costs something to get that oil out it costs walking through a trial to get that oil out It cost walking through the heaviness to get that oil out. Come and drill for oil.
to where we're at and what we're doing. In John 11, John 11 is the death of Lazarus. And Jesus comes to Mary, to Mary and Martha, and they both fall down before Jesus weeping. And they both tell him and they say, Lord, if only you'd been here. And Jesus wept with them. But then we know the story that Jesus brings Lazarus forth from the dead. And then in John 12, after they had witnessed what they had witnessed, it says, then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus, where Lazarus was, the one whom had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. And there they made him supper. And Martha served him, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. And then Mary, then Mary, who had just walked through the death of her brother, who had just walked through the funeral of her brother, who had just seen the stone rolled away over the tomb where her brother now would lay forever. This Mary, the one who ran up to Jesus and said, Jesus, if you would have only been here. Do you not know, Jesus, if you would have only been here? I wouldn't have had to walk through this. We wouldn't be going through this. Jesus, if you would have only been here. Do you know how hard this is, Jesus? If you would have only been here. This is the next time you see Mary. Here she comes. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her, with her hair. And the house was filled with a fragrance. And the house was filled with a fragrance. But one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, what a waste. Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Then he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. But Jesus said, leave her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you have with you always, but me you do not have always. And out of this thing that Mary walked through, out of this trial, out of this tough situation, she saw the nature and the character of the Lord. And from seeing what he was really like, who he really was, she had this oil to bring. And she brought this costly oil and she poured it on his feet. And people were saying, what a waste. Like, you know what we could have done with that? Jesus says, but this she's done for my burial. Which means while Jesus was on the cross, while Jesus was hanging there, his feet would have just been anointed with this, with this oil that filled the house with the fragrance. It would have been marinating on his feet. It would have been sitting there on his feet. And as he hung on the cross and he, he would have smelled the fragrance that she poured out on his feet. It's, what, would have, it's what, the, what the Roman guards would have smelled as they were putting the nail in his feet. We could see him looking at one another. What does that smell? What does that smell? And it was the oil that Mary had poured out that filled the house that people said, what a waste. we're here and we're in this room and some could say are they going to move on or where are they going or what does this even mean it's the invitation from the enemy to say what a waste what a waste but I see the Lord going oh don't you see the fragrance that's filling that room the fragrance that's filling that house smell that fragrance it's why we love to bring you our oil Lord you love the smell of our oil And 
it's through the pressing, it's through the trials, it's through those situations where we say, Lord, if you would have only been there, that we actually see your nature and your character and what are your ways and what are you like as you're bringing forth oil out of our hearts. You're bringing forth oil out of our lives. You're bringing forth oil. And when we bring you that oil back and waste it on you, oh, the fragrance fills the house. Jesus, let us be wasteful. If it's a waste, we'll waste our lives. If it's a waste, we'll waste our giftings. If it's a waste, we'll waste our calling. If it's a waste, let us be wasteful. If it's a waste, let us waste our lives.
fire, into the fire, into the fire. I'm coming back to the fire, to the fire, to the fire. I'm laying down in the fire, in the fire, in the fire. The fire in your eyes, fire in your eyes. I'm running back to the fire, the fire, the fire. I'm coming back to the fire, the fire, the fire. I'm laying down in the fire, the fire, the fire. The Father in your eyes, I desire. I'm gonna be the
All creation is in tension, waiting, groaning, anticipating to hear the trumpets, to hear the hooves of that horse, Father. There's an anticipation, Lord. Every tree beckons you to come back. Creation beckons you to come back, Lord. And we join that anticipation right now, Lord, through the crushing and tribulation and misunderstanding, there's an oil, there's an oil, there's an oil that creation longs to smell, that creation longs to smell the oil, the oil of the bride, the oil, the oil. There's a tension, Lord, there's a tension, Father. Come and ease the tension, come and ease the tension, Lord.
They all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out and meet him. Go out and meet him. And Lord, we say we don't want to be sleeping lovers. We don't want to be sleeping lovers. Lord, but we say come. to when we agree with what the Spirit is saying to you. Come, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you're expanding our vision of why we're even alive, that our life is not just like, we're not just here breathing air. There's something, Father, there's something why we were born even in this generation. There's something we get to beckon your return. Refresh our eyes on the second coming of the Lord. Lord, we gather in this room and we're ministering to your heart. 
but I know it's doing something to you, Lord. I know that it puts you at the edge of your seat saying, Father, is it time? Father, is it time? Father, is it time? We are ready, Lord. The anxious longing to see you face to face. We are ready. Come. Joel just read out of Revelation 22. And in that same passage, this is what it says in verse 17. It says, and the spirit and the bride say come. Together, the spirit and the bride say come. And then it says this, it says, and let him who hears it say come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires come, let him take the water of life freely. Let him who hears it say come. Let him who thirsts come. The spirit and the bride together say come and let him who hears it say come. So as we sing this, come on, let it bubble up within your heart. Let it provoke you unto desire. Let it provoke you unto hunger and thirst and as you hear it, Whoever hears it, say come. Whoever hears it, join in and say come. says, come, Lord Jesus. Would you come and unnumb me right now, Father? Just like Aaron was praying, thank you that you're drilling through our heart today to get that oil that says, come, come, Lord Jesus, come. Thank you that the oil says, come, Lord Jesus, come. Come unnumb our hearts. Any area that has stopped saying, come, Lord Jesus. It's why we exist. It's why we're made. It's why we're made to be the bride, to be the bride of Christ. Come, 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 come. We are ready. We are ready. We say come, 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 come. We are ready. All this is leading to that moment. All of this, all our lives. Lord, every mission trip, we are ready. Every song we write, it's all pointing to this. We say, come, 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 come. We are ready. We are Our jobs, our families points to this. Come, come, come. The mundane things, the everyday things, they all point to this like an arrow, Lord. Jesus, we say, come.
singing this, but if you if you've ever had a fear of the return of the Lord, like if somebody's told you something and it's produced within you fear, like when we talk about He's coming, come, and there's a fear that bubbles up, then I want you just to put your hand on your heart and we're gonna pray for you. But in the very beginning of Revelation, in the very opening statement in Revelation 1, it says, let joy enter the heart of him who reads this book. Let joy enter into the heart of him who reads this book. And so, Lord, I pray over your bride, Lord, over your sons, over your daughters, over those who've heard something. They've heard and been told something that's inaccurate, that's produced within them fear of your return. Lord, that as we say come, there's a fear that clouds up and and comes running. And they're like, I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I'm ready, Lord. And I pray that a joy would hit the hearts of those who hear us say come. A joy and an expectation, a hope would hit the hearts of those who hear us say come. And as they hear it, they join in saying come. Knowing it's not unto fear. It's not unto death. It's unto the return of the man. It's unto looking into the eyes of the man. The one we know, the one we love. So we say, come, come, come. We are ready. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. Let joy in your hearts. Let hope in your hearts. Let expectation in your hearts. He's coming. The one with fire.
know you want to come, so we say come, we are ready. Sweet. 